Hey guys, today I'm going to show you what level instances are, the two types of level instances, and why you should actually use them. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. I have prepared a few assets here that we are going to be turning into level instances. And how do you make a level instance is actually pretty simple. So you just pick and select all the little assets you want to create as an instance. And then what you do is basically go to go down here, go to a level and then create level instance. And here we have a, a pop-up show up. And this is basically gonna ask you about the pivot type. And pivot center min Z and pivot world origin and um, actor are very different. Center min Z basically will take the center and the minimum Z point of your group of meshes and it will make the pivot there. For the world origin, it basically, well, takes the world origin as the pivot center, which is very bad. Uh, it's, it's gonna create some problems, definitely. And then you have center, which basically just takes the center of all the assets you have. And we have actor. Actor is a special one and it's not really that good because you need to have a specific actor that's gonna be an actual um, an actual pivot point. So here I'm gonna select center min Z and I'm gonna hit OK. And here it's gonna pop up and tell me to save it. And I'm gonna save it as LI, so level instance, underscore, and I'm gonna say it rates or something like that. Doesn't really matter. And now we have a simple level instance. With this level instance, you can grab it, rotate it, you can copy it, which is basically the main purpose of it. And it is very, very simple indeed. A very nice way to just uh, spam assets across your scene or whatever you're creating. Now you can edit it, but as you can see, we don't really have anything to edit here. We cannot click on these assets individually or do anything really. So how you can do this is by clicking on the edit button here or by right clicking and then going into level and then selecting edit. And in here, you have a little bit of control with all these assets. So basically what you can do, let's just take this and we're gonna bring it down and we're gonna do like get it on this crate. Uh, so what this does is when we hit escape or exit here, uh, it will ask you to save the changes and when you hit save it will change all the level instances Which it might be something you want to do. It might be something you don't want to do But it is what it actually does so you can you change all the instances by changing only one which can be a bit impractical But at times it can be also very useful Another thing that is a bit inconvenient about this is you have this level instance and when you have a lot of them, you don't really know which is which. So by dragging them out, you have to figure out and it's not really it's not really easy to figure out which is which and what you need. And the next one kind of solves that problem very well, the next type of level instance. Uh, another thing you can do before we move on is when you copy this, and let's say you like the positioning of something here, but you want to change uh, the instances a bit so it doesn't feel repetitive. What you can do is right click on it again and then go to level again and then break and break level instances. This will break the level instance inside of the scene so you have separate instance meshes and you can change their uh, change their positions, whatever you really like, you can delete them even if you want to and they're not in any way now connected to the level instance. So it's a very good way to uh, get assets around and then when breaking them you can just introduce that variation by maybe deleting some assets and then just rotating a few and it's a very nice way to create a lot of variation. Uh, another thing that's worth noting is you can actually go inside of these and if I go into unlit mode, you can see the level instances. And if I change anything in here, so let's say uh, I'm gonna move this one on top. Uh, if I change anything in here, it will be the same as changing it inside of a level. So when I pull the level back, you can see the instance has been edited here. So it has this little pot on top instead of sitting on this crate right here. 
The next type of level instance we're going to be creating is a packed level actor. And it the process basically goes the same. So you just select these, right click, and then go to level and then create packed level and actor instead of create level instance. So click there. It's gonna ask again the same pivot point type. I'm gonna still keep center min Z and I'm gonna hit okay. So it asks you to save uh, the level now. And this is, I'm gonna call it level instance underscore and then cart and I'm gonna click save. And now it asks you something else. It actually asks you to create a blueprint of this. And it automatically gives the name, which is pretty handy. So I'm just gonna hit save here. And you'll immediately see the difference between uh, this level instance and this one. This one, you can see what's happening because it's a blueprint. You can see the icon of what it actually is. And while you're dragging it along, you can actually see the item you're dragging. You still have the level instance you can drag out, but you have the blueprint as well. And good things about blueprints is that you can actually uh, add some functionality to it. So we'll be adding a little bit of functionality and I'll be showing you some of the limitations of that as well. So let's hop into the blueprint. And what we can do is go into construction script. But before we do that, just notice that we have instanced static meshes here. So this is one, this is two, this is three. As you can see, they're all instanced and they have their own names. Pretty good. So let's go to construction script and you can see this barrel. Let's say that's the mesh we want to change and add some functionality to it. It's just going to be very simple. So uh, we're going to drag that out and we're going to say set static mesh. And now let's go to this. Uh, we're going to make this promote a variable and I'm just going to call it mesh. doesn't really matter much. Uh, and we're gonna say instance editable, and that is basically it. So now, uh, since this is running this construction script, you can check it inside the level immediately, and you can see we lost the barrel. So what we do is we actually just select the barrel here. <clears throat> it's because the mesh is empty here. So we just want to put barrel in there for starters. See, now everything is completely fine. So we will copy this over and now if you can see you have a mesh icon here. So I can change this to a crate, I can change this to another crate, uh, I can even change this to something like this or maybe something like this. It does break because we don't have the material functionality but I uh, personally wouldn't use this because of its limitations. Um, if you're interested, I could make this a bit more functional and show it in another video, but this is off the scope for this one. So the main point in not using these is that when you actually want to, let's say you're, you like this, but you maybe want the crate to be a bit bigger and you decide, oh, let's just uh, break it. So break level instance, same as before. And when we break it, it turns back into a barrel. So that is, one limitation that I have found personally and I really dislike. I still use blueprint version of the level instance because it's much more uh, easier to use. You actually have um, you actually have a little icon there and you know what's actually going on. And if you expand this functionality, it can be quite useful, but I like it for like what it is. It's just uh, very handy to drag them out, rotate maybe. And then if I really want to change something, I would just uh, go to level, again, break, break it. Yep. And once you break it, uh, I would just, let's say, change this into this. And there we go, basically. That's that. Mm -hmm.